Good morning, Dion. My name's Patrick Georgevic. It's uh, such a pleasure to chat to you. Appreciate the time, brother. Patrick, I love you rocking the turtleneck, man. It's all good. Hey, I was thinking about the shades too, you know, but... Uh, yeah, you should have. You should have rocked them. <laughs> yeah, I know. My my uh, girlfriend's a CU girl, so, you know, there's a bit of pressure to look clean and do all that. There so. you go. There you go, CU. All right, right here. Right here, buddy. Yeah, she just missed you, though. She graduated uh, last year, so she got to come back and catch a game with you now. You got to but... catch a game. You, you got to come with and catch a game. Uh, we can do that. Hey, Dion, uh, first of all, this season's been a really interesting one. You've had so much attention. Obviously, yeah. your sons have got some of that as well. Your whole coaching career has been tied to them largely. Have you thought about what that looks like when they have gone into the NFL? No, we haven't. We, we're a kind of in the moment type of family. We like to dominate the moment and dominate the time. We're not thinking down the street. Uh, the goal is for them to be drafted in the same draft, which would be wonderful. Then I'll think about it uh, then after. But right now, man, we just want to dominate the moment. For sure. And Dion, you've talked a lot about how coaching at the college level wasn't necessarily on your mind. That was God's plan. He called you right. to. Have you considered what you would do if God calls you to the NFL? Um, I don't think that that call uh, that that's a collect call. I don't think that call would be truly accepted. I don't, I don't think God would make that collect call. I don't I don't feel like I'm an NFL type of coach because I know how old school and demanding and critical and and conscientious of the little things that that make turns into big things. I don't know if I'm cut out for that. So I don't think that would ever be a case that I had to make that decision. So with that old school mentality, though, Dion, how does that then apply to college coaching? Because I, I would fathom those kids aren't even as hardened as the NFL guys. Well, the NFL guys uh, make a lot of money, and oftentimes they some don't want to work. And uh, with college, you got to understand, they still have dreams and aspirations, and they feel a person like myself that's been there and done that could navigate them to and direct them to their, their destiny. And this is oftentimes the first time they've wandered away from home. They've been without mom and dad. And we serve as parents as well. Our whole staff serves as parents to these young men that are away from home for their first times. For sure. And so, Dion, we talk about NIL and how that's impacted the college game. Uh -huh. How has that impacted your recruiting? And given oh, that you have uh, it, there you go. That's, it's, shoot, that, that's a tremendous because it's different now. If you take out um, NIL and Collective, I, I think we may be probably the number one recruiters in the country. But when you have those intangibles, it, it makes it tougher because a guy's not basing his decision totally on what's the best place for him and for his growth and for his maturity, maturation, and prepare him for the next level. It's about business and it's about finances. And that shouldn't always be the case. I, I don't think that should ever be the case. But if you could have both, it's a wonderful scenario. And that's what we're trying to do to equip these kids to have both of those options, not only the best place for them to raise them and to grow them as a man, but someplace where they can be financially stable during their time of college. For sure. And so you mentioned, Dion, you talked a little bit about this throughout the season, but you said before the Utah game that Colorado wasn't going to be an ATM. Right, then, right. You're asked, you're asked a different question after the game at, at Utah, and you admitted that kids cost. Like, what, what was the change in, in okay. thought process there? Or it, it wasn't. It happened? wasn't a change. What I'm, what I'm, I, I see when you're coaching you in a press conference, you really don't get chance to a chance to explain your thought sure. process. So when I say Colorado is not going to be an ATM, we don't truly want the kids. That only thing they want is finances. We, we don't want that. The kids is going to come up and put their card in, get money and go. We, we don't want that. We want a kid that wants to become a man, a kid that wants to understand the principles of life, a kid that wants to be a great father, be a great husband, that, that graduates, a kid that wants to dominate on the field and off the field in life. That's the kids we want. We don't just want to be your ATM. We want to be the holistic um, opportunity called a college institution filled with football and academics. That's what we want to be, not just a bag grab, a money grab. That was the meaning behind that. Sure, I'm glad you explained it. Thank you for that. And, yeah. and so with your recruiting process, how is that, Dion? Like, obviously, you, there's, there's no one like you in terms of personality and achievements in the college game. 
you know, as, as an individual figure. So how do you recruit and, and is there anything you need to do other than just show interest? Oh, no, no, no. You got, you got to, you know, you got to be on these kids. You, you got to show them that you care. You got to show them that you're the best fit for them, that you have what they need. You can uh, develop them into the player that they want to be. We got to uh, let the parents know we can develop those young men into the men that they want as well. Um, to call sons and good sons and potential fathers. Um, we got to be from A to Z, man. We got to take care of so many attributes of those young men. And I love the challenge. And the, the the best part about this, my man, is that I've sat in all three seats. I've been the player that has been recruited. I've been the parent sitting beside the player that's recruited. And now I'm the coach sitting on the other side recruiting the player. So I understand vividly and candidly all three sides of this thing. For sure. That's a really interesting perspective. Dion, as the years gone on, being in the Power Five uh, for the first time, who did you lean on when things were challenging or when you didn't necessarily have the answer to the to the test? Everybody. I mean, I have a Rolodex of, of coaches um, that are currently in the NFL, um, also in college football that I trust. Also, spiritual advisors outside of that realm, and my pastor, uh, Pastor Dewey Smith out of Atlanta. Um, uh, it's a plethora of people that I can lean on for different aspects of what I'm dealing with. If I'm dealing with recruiting, okay, I may lean on this guy because he does a phenomenal job. Am I? If I'm dealing with adversity, adversity, I could call Coach Saban, Coach. How did you handle this? Because I know you went through it because you are the godfather of it all. Okay, if if uh, it's dealing with uh, managing and processing the game. I may call Jimmy Johnson, you know, Coach Johnson. Tell, so you you got to understand, I have a plethora of people that God has afforded me to lean on to get correct advice and direction. And that's a blessing, man. Sure. Dion, can you take us into that uh, chat with Coach Saban? Like when you called him, a little bit more specifics. Can you give us a little more? Well, it, it, it's, it's, it's different because during the seasons, it's tough. But Preseason, when we're doing an athlete commercial, that's when we have nothing but time <laughs> in between shots, in between setups, nothing but time. And I'm like a kid, you know, dragging on the tail of a, an adult coach. Okay, tell me what happened when this – hey, coach, uh, tell me about this situation. Well, coach, how could you handle that? I'm, I'm like a kid, man, like like wanted. And uh, he gives it, and I'm and I'm thankful for that. For sure. Uh, Dion, talk to us about this documentary. What did you, the second season here, uh, wow. Prime, what was the most rewarding part of that for you? And, and what should you think the, the viewers are likely to see that they'll love the most? The most rewarding part, first of all, is exciting, exhilarating, electrifying. And now there's expectation. It was a, just a season of hope. We hoped to do this. We hoped we would do that. The fans hoped that we could do this. We hoped to do it. We sold out the season. We sold out everywhere we went. Um, the apparel and the, the economy and Colorado just blew up in Boulder. Everything was wonderful. But what I really, I think, loved the most was the interviewing of uh, Jimmy Horn, his father that's incarcerated. And we were able to get cameras in the prison to allow you to understand this this wonderful relationship of a man that that worked his butt off for his family but loves his son so much and and still trying to be a father even behind bars it's a, it's a tearjerker man it, it's and getting to know Travis and Shador and some of our other characters on the team is it's it's phenomenal the ups and downs the ins and outs the roller coaster ride uh, winning and losing you 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 get a peek behind the curtains, a true peek behind the curtains, and it's it's awesome, man. It really is. It definitely is. And Dion, one final one from me: How do you approach this second season? Now you're a bit, you guys are a bit of an unknown. Now everyone knows yeah. what to expect with the theater, with the interest. Some of you're that right. comes criticism. How do you approach? Is it any different than what you did year one? Well, first of all, you approach it with. Uh, New players, the day is the day that the portal opens up. And we live by the portal. I mean, you know, we're 40, 40, 20, 40 portal, 40 grad transfer, 20% um, high school. So the portal portal is very vital to us. So you're going to see transition of a multitude of players to fill the positions that there's a need. If you watch this play, you know where the need is. And we have expectation to fulfill those positions. 
and uh, some blessings and the coaching staff. We had some coaches elevate and get opportunities at other places, which I adore because I believe in elevation. I believe in coaches must move. It's like the cycle of life. And you got to have a, a bag of, of young men uh, ready to coach and go into these young men. That's another thing Coach Saban taught me because he every year it's a cycle. He 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 loses coaches every year and you got to have the other ones ready to go. But, uh, man, I'm, I'm so excited about this next season because it's expectation. This season was about instilling hope, and we did that in a level like no other. Now it's expectation because we're expected to do the things that we couldn't conclude last season, and I love the challenge. Well, I've loved this conversation, Dion. Thank you so much for the time. It's been a pleasure, and good luck for the season. God bless you. You take care. Tell your girlfriend, God bless you. I'm glad you graduated, but please come back for a game. Hey, we got you. Thank you, Dion. Take care. Yeah.